Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. It's good to be gathered with you in the Savior's name around an open Bible to look into the scriptures and to hear from God's word. But first we will hear from our musicians, our singers, and here first of all is Tim Sturby to sing, Jesus is all the world to me. This is all the world to me, my joy, my life, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes me my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, and true to him I'll be. Oh, how could I this friend deny when he is so true to me? Following him, I know I'm right. He watches o'er me day and night. Following him by day and night, he's my friend. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his The Bible has the answer. We look into the scriptures to learn more of what God has to say to us, and we dig in particularly where there are difficulties and problems in understanding. Question number one, explain 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 9. Here we are in the pastoral epistles where Paul is speaking into the life of Timothy and also into Titus, first and, first and second Timothy and Titus, they are the three pastoral epistles where Paul is giving instruction to pastors, Timothy and Titus. Let me read this one verse which is at question. A widow, a widow is to be put on the list only if she is not less than 60 years old, having been the wife of one man. I suspect that the question comes to us, especially around the, or the, the, the term, the list. This, uh, a widow is to be put on the list. And there have been many who have wondered about what exactly Paul is speaking of here, and I suspect that the simplest answer is the most, is the best one for us. Undoubtedly, in the first century church, there was a list in each church which was compiled of those who were to be helped by the church body. Others could help from their, from their own means, but from the collective means of the church, there were individuals who were to be helped, supported. We 
as we read in a larger context here, we gather the sense that there were those who, coming to know Christ, thought that, oh, this is wonderful. I can put my feet up and I can have others take care of me and I don't have to do really anything. I can just live off of the kindness of others. And they were taking the kindness and they were manipulating others. And Paul, identifying this, even in such an early time of the Christian church, he speaks words of instruction to Timothy and he says, look, you can't have everyone on this list. You need to have some discretion. You need to have some wisdom as to how you approach this. And so he says, a widow is to be put on that list of help, those who are, who are to receive help, only if she is not less than 60 years old and having been the wife of one man, that she has not been in any way, uh, in any way moving around in, uh, in her uh, situation. So this is undoubtedly what Paul is meaning and from what we should take from it. Question number two. Is the bishop or overseer referenced in 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 to 8 essentially what we today call a pastor? Once again, we have from the earliest times in the Christian church a multitude, a manifold plethora of titles which are given to various officers within the church and even in the scriptures here. We have disciples and we have apostles and we have elders, we have deacons and on and on it goes. We have bishop overseer as is given here. Again, the simple answer is that yes, Paul is speaking to Timothy who himself is a pastor in a local church, but who also has, as Titus, oversight in other areas, the gospel moving out and other churches being established. And so it's not simply is Timothy or is Titus worthy, but who else to be appointed as pastors? Pastors were always appointed. They were not elected as we are custom strangely is today, but they were appointed. And so Timothy, Titus, they needed the wisdom of knowing exactly how to do that. Here we read in 1 Timothy chapter 3, it is a trustworthy statement if any man aspires to the work, to the office rather, of overseer or bishop in other translations, it is a fine work he desires to do. And then in the successive uh, verses, here we have the regulations or the qualifications rather of the individual, of the man who would fulfill that task. Starting in verse 8, we then have a different office, a supportive office to the pastor, and that is the deacons who, as in Acts chapter 7, although they are not called deacons there, yet the seven, they were a great help in practical matters to the apostles that the gospel might continue to be proclaimed and that other lesser matters, though important, that they might not detract from the ministry of prayer and the word. These are good questions. Always glad to hear from you. If you have a question for The Bible Has the Answer, our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Heidi and Dorothy team up now to sing Till the Storm Passes By, and that is followed by Ruth and Matt, who sing Hiding in Thee. Storm howls above me. 
We are very happy to announce that we have produced a new German CD titled Gott ist die Liebe with 14 familiar songs and scripture verses. Here are a few of the songs that have been recorded. Großer Gott, wir loben dich. Schönster Herr Jesus, Gott ist die Liebe. So lang mein Jesus lebt, ich weiß einen Strom. Sagt es laut, dass Gott die Liebe auf Adlers Flügeln getragen and seven more songs of worship and praise. We know this German CD will be a rich blessing in your home. When you write, simply ask for your free copy of the German CD called Gott ist die Liebe at Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C 2H6 or call us toll free at 1-833- 367-3852 or email us at faithtoliveby.ca Der Herr segne dich und behüte dich. Der Herr lasse sein Angesicht leuchten über dir und sei dir gnädig. Der Herr hebe sein Angesicht über dich und gebe dir Frieden. Rick and Tim now sing Restore My Soul. Restore my 
My doubts and my confusions cloud my mind. I have walked in my own wisdom. I've been wrong. Take my hand and lead me back where I belong. Stripped of all of once I clung to, Lord, I come. Nothing, yet I come With your hand that once was nail-scarred Just for me Touch me now and make me all that I should be Restore my soul I want to take you to Romans chapter 8 and three separate scripture verses of rich encouragement. I begin with chapter 18 and ver, chapter 8 and verse 18. Paul writes, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. The Apostle Paul was well acquainted with sufferings and difficulties. He knew what shipwreck was. He knew what the inside of a prison looked like. He knew what it was like to feel the end of a whip. He knew what it was like to have stones hurled at him. And aside from this, he knew what it was to be mocked and scorned, to be derided, to be maligned, to be lied about and to be thought to be a horrible person. But Paul says, dear Christian brother and sister, he says, I consider this is something that was deep within his heart. He says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time, Paul was not downplaying them. He was saying they are sufferings, there are things which are extremely unpleasant, to put it ever so lightly. There are difficulties. There are immense trials and tribulations. But Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. Think of a balance. You place a weight on one side, and that side goes down, and the other side goes up. And Paul is saying, 
those heavy nights and those heavy difficult days through which we go, we place them on the one side and all of a sudden, in our estimate, all of a sudden it is out of balance. But Paul is saying, there is something that is so great and glorious right on ahead for the believer in Jesus Christ that the sufferings of this present time will seem as though they were but a moment of time. They will be gone. What an encouragement that is for us. Very often we hear from people who are going through horrendous difficulties and it just seems that one day turns into a, a, another day, but it's only worse, it would seem. And there doesn't seem to be hardly any reason for rejoicing at all. But Paul's words, I believe, are appropriate for us here today in this present time. We also need to take the attitude of the Apostle Paul and consider in the very same way that the difficulties through which we pass remembering that this is the hour of time, but we shall step into the glorious day of eternity, and that shall roll on forever and ever. I consider that the sufferings of this present time not worthy, not worthy in any possible way to be compared with the opposite, with that glory which is to be revealed to us. That's word of encouragement number one. Word of encouragement number two, verse 26, the apostle says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. There is help that comes to us right from the Spirit of the living God. We do not pass through this world by ourselves endeavoring to do the best that we can, but there is real help. There is real strength that comes to us from the Spirit of the living God. Paul says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps our weakness. And he focuses most especially on a particular weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we should. Have you experienced this? I'm sure that you have. Sometimes the words you don't know what to pray. And it's not simply that you're praying out loud and leading others. I sense that repeatedly, looking for the right words. But when I'm in my prayer closet also, I struggle to know how is it that I express my heart before the Lord. Oh, the Spirit comes along and He helps us in our weakness. We do not know how we ought to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. The Spirit comes and helps us that our prayers ascend before the Father, that our petitions come before the Lord in just the right manner, in just the right tone, in just the right intercession, and the target, the bullseye is hit, as it were, before the throne of God. Wonderful to have the Spirit to help us. Encouragement number two. Encouragement number three, it's verse 28. Paul says, and we know, without a doubt, and we know, that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. What joy that all the things in our lives, whether they are things that we had hoped for and dreamed for, or whether they are something that we would have never wished on our worst enemy, but yet they are a part of our lives, we know something and here is a blessed secret for the believer. We know that God, he is at work. 
He is not forgetful. He is ever mindful of his own, and he is taking all that is within our hearts and within our lives, within our daily tasks and responsibilities and routine, and he is taking all of that and he is causing he is working it, he is weaving it, and he is blending it into us. He is causing, he is making it to be a blessing. We know that God causes all things, all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And dear friend, you are called to Christ. But are you fighting against him? Are you saying, Lord, I don't want to get too close. I'm afraid of what you might do with my life. I'm afraid of how that surrender might look. Come to Christ. You will know joy. You will know life surpassing. You will know his love lavished upon you. Come to the cross. Come to Christ and surrender to him. And know life everlasting and abundant in him today. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 